Okay, so I think things are back to normal. Um, just gonna hear myself to see if it's streaming all right. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. Okay, oh, finally. I had to restart the computer. This is, <laughs> this is horrible. Way to start the, the live. Uh, okay, so I had set this up so beautiful and now I have to set it up again. I won't, let's not waste people's time. So, if you are still here, thank you for being patient. Um, where's my material here? All right. So I had this problem on the trip planner material. If you've watched the tutorial, you know that it can't be used with normal maps. And of course, that's bad. So these are my notes, not to forget what I have to say. So of course, that's bad. Um, so I'm here to tell you how to fix that problem because it's not easy. Projecting normal maps, it's it's not just projecting any other texture because they depend on the, the UVs of the texture of the mesh. And that's why they are a problem with projections. Let's get there. So first, I'm going to create super quickly here a triple planner material from scratch. If you want details, you can watch my YouTube tutorial on doing that. So let's go get normal vertex normal. So this, I have to use the absolute values. And then power nodes to be able to control the transition between the, the three planes. So let's see. Uh, now blending sharpness. This will be one. Actually, I prefer it as, let's start with 60. So it's a bit sharper. Goes here, I need more space here. All right, so now, um, this part I'm gonna do a bit differently than I did on my first tutorial because I found this technique to be faster in terms of processing. Instead of just separating the values and adding them one by one, I dot the vector with a vector of one, 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 because dot, it's just multiplying each component, so x times x, y times y, z times z, and then summing them together, adding them all together. And since we just need to add them all together, I can do this in one single operation because the video card is optimized to do this super fast. Should we get rid of this little sound? These dogs like barking when they shouldn't. <laughs> so. Now I have to divide every value by their sum. And if I split this, I will have the three intensities for each side of my trip planner plane. All right, so if I preview it, I, I have configured Unreal to have Shift B as the preview shortcut. Oh, but wait, I forgot to put it on my main screen. All right, so as you can see, this is only showing the X direction in the material. This one only Y, Y direction, and this last one only in Z direction. So I already have my masks for triplanar textures. Now I need the mapping. So for that, I get 
world position uh, position you type world position it doesn't show up you delete world it shows up uh, what else I need to split this to actually first I'll divide it because then I can control the size of the texture uh, how I want it to be sized in real world terms so if I wanted the texture to be like uh, one meter I can just divide it by 100 because in real works in centimeters so this and then I can also break these just like, just like I did there so I'm going to do this because it's easier to copy these and connect when they are together like that. All right. So I, I'm separating all the dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And let's sample, let's put these together to sample texture. So let's create the coordinates for the triplanar sampling. So pin vector. For the x-axis, I'm going to have y and z. So this is my x-coordinates. And then for my y-coordinates, I'm going to use, let's see, r, red, x, and b. C, which is blue for Z. Um, by the way, I'm doing these because uh, you can see this in the tutorial, but just to briefly explain, if I'm going to map on something that's on X, using the X coordinate doesn't make sense because it's, it's pointing at me. So I need coordinates that are pointing to the sides and up. So that's Y and Z. And then the third one for Z, if you forget this, just remember, use the coordinates that are, that are not the one that you're projecting onto. So if I'm projecting onto Z, I'm not going to use B here. I'm not going to use the, the Z vector. So for these, I'm going to go with green and red. And the order I chose here is special. I'm going to explain this later. It's not like essential to make normal maps work, but it does make it easier. Uh, now I need to sample texture. So let's see, texture, object. And then let's sample it three times. So this one's gonna be my X plane. FX projection. Then my one projection and my Z projection. All from the same texture. Okay. And let's make this shared wrap because it's lighter, it's a new mode. Not new now, it's it's been there for a few years, but it's an improvement over the default. So let's use that. Okay, and now we have to mix these projections together to make the trip planner. So it's gonna be the X projection times the X intensity, and then the y intensity times the y projection and the z projection times the z intensity. Then we add them all together. And that's our final trip planner projection. So you don't have to have UVs it's your your texture is just simply projected from all sides so if i put here for instance checkers 
For the checkers, not the red one. I think it's default, the name. Yeah, default alpha texture. So if I have that and I make the size smaller, it is projected from all sides, like having projectors on, on the mesh. Now let's try that with normal map. So I'm going to put this in the normal for my material and change texture into a normal. I think there's a good one called dots. Yep, tag dot n. All right, so let's make some color here to have this material something more visible. And for roughness, I want something low. Just so it's a bit shiny, then we can see reflections what's going on with the shape of the material. And let's make this texture even smaller. Here. That's too small. Here. Okay. All right, so this... This already shows the problem. We have, uh, th this is actually really bad. We have the light here coming from the right side. And here, the shadow is wrong because this normal map was supposed to give the impression that these spheres are convex in the, in the mesh not concave, so they're not supposed to look like holes, they're supposed to look like bumps. So this is already wrong. It's wrong here too. And at the top, we have a very interesting effect. Like on this side, they look like holes, and on this side, they look like bumps, because the light's coming from the right here. So this, they look here they look correct, here they also look correct, but here they don't. And in the rest of the sphere, except the bottom, they also don't. But the bottom is going to be also only right on some directions. So, why is this happening? Well, the first thing is we need to, we need to understand what normals are. So let me get a sphere. Let me open the sphere from the, the editor. So if I select nothing, I can search everything in the editor. So let's search for shapes, oops, shapes, sphere. So I have the, the sphere here. And actually even better, let me see if I can find the torus. Yeah. So let's have the torus here. With the torus selected, let's preview it. Uh, let me make a copy of the torus. And then I can alter its material without changing anything in the engine. So copy here. Then I can apply the material that I just did. Need to save the material, of course. Okay. So I have the stars here. Let's make it smaller. The spheres. All right. So the stars has the same problem. We have the light coming from the left. And on some spheres, like here, it looks correct. But on most places, it doesn't. So first, let me explain what are normals. You can see normals if you click on this. Normals are, they're a vector. A vector is like this combination of X, Y, Z that we use for locations in 3D. And normals are also a vector, but they don't represent a location. They represent a direction. Um, so they are the direction perpendicular to the surface. So they're always gonna be pointing exactly outside from the surface, never to the sides, or inside, unless it's an inverted face. So always straight outside from the surface. And the normals, they decide 
they define how the the mesh is going to be shaded. So if I remove this normal here, the normal map, and go back to the turrets, you're going to see that the light's coming from this side here, from the left top, the top left, and you can see because of the normals in the mesh, you have a highlight here, then you have a bit of shadow and shadow, completely shadow uh, on this side, completely dark. And that's because the light's coming from there. Then Unreal sees, hey, these normals are pointing at the light, so they can be bright. These normals are pointing opposite to the light, so they have to be dark. So that's how the light is cal calculated for the surface of your mesh. And what normal maps do is they change these normal directions, but not in the geometry. They change it for every pixel. So they can make it look like the, sh the mesh has a shape that it doesn't actually have. It can create the illusion of detail in your mesh. So this is what normals are. Uh, they are since they are vector, they are always represented with RGB values or XYZ. So in most, most 3D programs, I never used one that wasn't like this. X, Y, and Z are represented by these three colors. R, G, and B, on the same order. So that's why X is red here, Y is green, and Z is blue. So that makes it easier to work with colors and vectors. Um, so now let's talk about the tangents. Because the normal map that we're using here is something that we call a tangent normal map. Let's go, let's explain first what's tangent. A tangent, when you have a curve, let's say, let's see, consider this border, the silhouette of this donut here, this torus, as a 2D line. If you had a line on any point on this line that represents the direction it's going on, so, so like, let's say a point right here, a line would be like this, following this grid line here. That's a tangent. It's a line that displays the direction of the curve on that specific point. In 3D, things are not just 2D lines. They are surfaces. So lines that represent the direction that something is... the direction that the surface is going to can be in any direction because it's a 3D surface. So you could have a line like... In the screen, you could have a line like for for this point, a line like this, like this, like this, like many lines could represent, could be parallel to the surface. So for 3D, we have a standard. Tangents are always going to be in the direction of this, uh, the, the texture. So I have this button hidden here because my I have the editor with small icons enabled. So for some reason, this button doesn't show up. But if you don't have this option enabled, you're going to see a button here with a thin arrow. If you click that, you can see the tangents of your, of your UVs. So the tangents on your mesh depend on the UVs. Let me put some texture here that will make it really clear before I go into normals. Just to make it super clear what I mean with tangents depending on UVs. So texture, I want one called pattern because it's going to be super good to display direction. Uh, let's put it in base color. And I want it tiled. So I'm going to get the coordinates and tile it, let's say, five on each side. So apply. I go back to, to my torus. All right, so in my texture, the texture that I picked, the colors are flowing. The, the colors change on the horizontal axis, and they go from black to bright on the vertical axis. And in a real, the vertical axis grows down. So here's the zero, 00 point of the texture, the top left corner, and going down, the values, the, the y value grows. So this is the one point of the texture the, that it's equal to one, the, the coordinate there in y. And in the torus, 
you can see that the colors, the colors change in horizontal. So the tangent always points in the direction that the texture is flowing horizontally. And as you can see, the sequence, the sequence of colors here are red, purple, blue, cyan, green. Let's go with that. Red, purple, blue. Just remember that. If you look here, from the point of each normal, each normal here is coming out of a vertex in my mesh. So if I display the, uh, I can see the wireframe on top of the mesh. I know this is possible. All those vertex colors. Show. I know this is possible. Me on the viewport only. Oh, those the vertex visualization is awful. I would like to show in wireframe. Wireframe is kind of confusing here. Uh, all right, you'll have to just believe me for now because I can't remember how to display edges here and I and I'm sure it's possible at least it was simple collision a well, complex collision does the job so you have the edges of the mesh here the triangles that, that make the mesh and on each vertex vertex of the mesh you can see that's where the normals come from and the tangents and the tangents from the vertex they're always pointing in the direction that the texture flows so the texture the right side of the texture, the, the, the side that the texture flows in the UVs is the side that the tangent is pointing. So red to blue, that's the side the tangent is going. So this rotates with the mesh because of the UVs. So if I open the UVs for this mesh here, this is, let me see if I can get, all right. So I clicked on an edge here and you can see it's here. Now, if I click on the edge in the direction that the texture flows horizontally, you're going to see that it's going to be the, the edge to the right here. So if I select this, it's the edge to the right because this tangent is pointing in the direction of how the mesh is laid out in the UVs. That's why it matches the texture. Same thing for bi-tangents. Bi-tangents are the tangents that point in the, direct, in the vertical direction of the texture. So if I display the bi-tangents, you're gonna see that these blues, these blue lines here are the bitangents, and they are pointing down in the direction of the texture. So if I select this edge here, and then I select the one in the direction that the blue lines are pointing at, it's gonna be the one below that in the map. If I can get this, so this and the top one. See? So these are flowing the the bit, the bitangents are pointing the direction that the texture flows. And like I said, in a real, zero is on top, one is at the bottom. So it's flowing down. That's why these tangents are pointing towards the side, the sides, the yeah, the side that is the downside of the texture, the the bottom of the texture, like here, the black one, the black part. So these are tangents and by tangents. Now, let me see what's next. Rotation. All right, so the normal map works with these tangents. Let me go back to the normal in the material. Actually, let me apply this without tree planner because you're going to see how it works normally. So if I apply the normal using the coordinates from the, the mesh itself and make it smaller so it's easier to see what I mean. All right, so if I apply the normal, 
in the with the standard I mean the standard way using the, the UVs from the mesh you're gonna see that it's correctly applied all the spheres feel like they, they look like they're a bump not a hole in the mesh and that's because I'm applying the normal with the coordinates that follow the tangents so the red colors in the normal map let me open this texture the red color here if you look at only the red in this texture defines what's supposed to be turned to the left like imagine those lines the point outside of the surface imagine like you're rotating them to make it look like the surface is rotated that way so black is rotating the red tangent, tangent the horizontal one to the left side of the texture what would be the left side against the side the tangent and the bright side is rotating it towards the direction of the tangent now green does the same thing but it's vertical to the texture so for the green for the blue tangents it's pointing when it's white it makes the tangent the the normal point more towards the by tangent the blue one and black make a point more towards more against the blue tangent so if you look here let me see if i can isolate only red here So that you can see the only the direction of the tangents being affected. So I'm gonna multiply by this, then I'm gonna have red, zero, and I need blue. Wait. Make float. Actually, I can't let uh, green be zero. I need it to be some. It's to be zero point five. So let's break this. Okay, let's see if I can isolate. Yeah, I think that does the trick. So here in the torus, you can see that I'm only changing, it looks like I'm changing vertically too, but I'm not. I'm only changing the direction in the red channel, and the red channel is only affecting light in the direction of these red tangents, which are the tangents that follow the texture horizontally. And red channel is the one that flows horizontally through the texture. So that's what red does, that's what green does, the vertical, the other tangent, the bi-tangent. And blue just represents, it's brighter when the normal is supposed to be facing towards the, the, the original normal of the surface, and it's dark when it's not, when it's facing anywhere else. So because anywhere else can't really explain which direction, we have the other two channels to represent that. So that's why normals are mostly blue when they don't have much detail. And they also have the other two colors. And if you, if you think about it, it always looks like they are being lit from below with the green light and from the, the right with the red light. And that's how you can kind of read how this normal will change the surface. All right, so that said, normals need tangents to be displayed correctly. You see, this normal is rotated, and all the spheres, if I use the normal in its standard way again, standard way, not multiplying by zero here, you can see that all the spheres look like spheres. None of them look like holes. Because this is just a texture, a normal texture, following the tangents in the mesh. The, its channels are following the tangents. So if I use this as color,
red flows in the direction of the red tangent, green flows in the direction of the, the blue tangent, which is a vertical one, and it's like that for all the vertices because of the UVs. The UVs define the, direct, the direction of the tangents. So if you use a texture with the UVs, it's always going to work. Now, when you project a normal map, I project this on the base color first so we can see. When you project, because you're projecting the texture, let me turn off the normals. Because you're projecting the texture like as a plane on top of the mesh from three directions, let's look at the top direction here first. You're not rotating these colors with the tangents in the mesh. So the problem is that here you have green flowing in the direction of the red tangent and here you have green lighter in the opposite direction of the blue tangent so it's not in the correct direction so here it's going to look like a hole so i'm going to keep the camera there let's put this as a normal put my bright color back So this looks like a hole, even though we know the light's coming from the right because the shadow's here. So we know the, the light's coming from the right, but it looks like a hole because our normals are inverted here. The, their directions are not correct. They are only going to be correct in one place where the tangents are matching the texture in the correct direction. But that's that. Anything else rotated in a different direction don't match. So what we have to do to, to, to fix this is to get the information from the normals Ignore the tangents in the mesh because rotating the normal is crazy. It's a lot of cal calculation, unnecessary. We're going to get information from the normals and use that to directly affect the normal of the surface. We're going to do the same thing that Unreal does with normal maps and tangents, but we're going to do it ourselves without tangents using world normal coordinates. Now, this is different from the tangent normal map that we're using here. A tangent normal map has its name because it depends on tangents, like I just showed. But normal space, uh, world space, is the direction of the normals of the mesh, not depending on the tangents, but depending on the coordinates of the world. So let me show the coordinates, the normal coordinates for this mesh. Oh, and also let me make it absolute because actually I'm not gonna make it absolute. Let's leave it like this. It's just normal for now. Just want to show you the colors. Now these are the normals for this mesh. What the normals represent. So remember I said normals can be directions representing colors, and they're yeah every color is brighter where the surface is pointing more in that direction. So red is X. So where the surface is pointing more towards the X side, let me turn off these visualizations. So where the normal is pointing more towards the X axis, you have red. Where it points more towards the blue axis, Z, you have more blue. So every part of the surface pointing up has blue. And every part of the surface pointing towards the green axis, the Y axis, is pointing to the is the part of the surface pointing to the right it's also greener and the black parts is because when it's pointing opposite to that direction so let's say here up is blue and down is this would be minus one but because you can't see negative colors on the screen it's just black here but it's a negative value there same thing for x so you can see where x x points in that direction so on this side you have also black. It, it would be like negative red because this side is red, this side is red, these sides are pointing positively to this side. So this is how normal works in world space. These colors, the numbers, match the world coordinates in Unreal. And we're going to modify these values, adding detail from the normal map in world space. So Let's do that. First, I'm going to have to get the channels of these textures. 
of each of these projections separately because every channel means something different and I'm gonna have to work them differently depending on what projection it is. So let's start with the red projection. Let's see what it looks like in the mesh. Uh, let me make it a bit bigger so it's easier to see. All right. Let me multiply this so we can see it isolated only on the sides that it matter. Okay, so it matters on this side and on this side. Uh, so what we need here is for x, the red color here, the x coordinate on the normal map to be brighter where where the world coordinates that it that it needs to modify, like think of this, it's gonna bend the normals of the surface in a certain direction. Since it already points to the side, we wanna use it to as a value that tells the mesh how much we're bending the normal on that direction, the direction that it's red. In this case, it's white. So red in for this projection is changing my world, my world normal the normals that I just showed you, it's changing that value in the y coordinate because it it's bright to the left and left looking from this side is y positive. And if you invert the side, it still works because now red is on the right side and y is also on the right side. So you just need to add this value to the y value of our mesh normal. So let's separate the coordinates on our mesh normal. Okay, so we have here x, y, and z. And so first let's modify y, so this is y, with the red coordinate here, y red, because red is in the direction of y in the world. And we need to modify these, these things in the world. We're not thinking as tangent space anymore. So let's add this. to this chip. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for green. So let's see, what's green? Green is up on both sides. And up is what? Up Z. So we're gonna add green to the Z axis of the world normal. So let's add the Z axis and green. All right. Now, blue is what? Blue is, is what points towards us, towards the screen. For every projection, blue is going to be the direction of that projection. So this projection is x. Blue points towards or against the screen, which is x. Because this is the x projection. It comes from x. Now, this one, we're not going to modify it. Uh, actually, I messed up here. This was supposed to be the green because it's Y. I, I messed up there. So we're going to modify X with this blue value that's modifying X in world space. So this is world space. But we're not going to add it. Because of the way it works, remember when I said blue means looking directly. Oh, this is awful. I have a bug here. You can't see on the screen capture but it's awful. Everything becomes black. I hope you don't get that bug, it's annoying. At least I can see through the capture what's going on. So if you if you look here, you can see that it's less blue. This is a blue channel of the texture. It's less blue where the surface is supposed to not, not be direct, directed at blue, at, at the outside of the surface. So I'm gonna use that to reduce the size of the normal in that direction. So the normal in that direction is x because x is the axis in this direction in world space. So it's direction towards the screen. I'm going to multiply that by the blue channel of the texture. So effectively, what it does is here x, but the normal is saying you should point less at x. Less means closer to zero. What happens when you multiply any value by something closer to zero? It also shrinks the value. It, it lowers that value. So that's what we want here. We want to make this x coordinate point less at x, depending on the amount in the normal. 
So that's why I multiply it by the amount here. Now, this is our altered coordinate from the mi mixing what's in the world normal with the, the normals from the texture. And in order to create a final x, y, z from this, we can either append the vector twice to append these and then append the result of the two with the third, or we can just use the make load three node to make it directly. And if I put this into the multiple, so we can only see it where it matters, you can see that the direction of the mesh, this is the original direction of the mesh, by the way. So it's blue here at the top, uh, cyan here, and green at the bottom right. And this is the coordinates modified by our values here. I did something wrong because this was supposed to be blue still. So let me just check. So this is the X projection, RGB, R in this projection. Is changing the green channel, so green with R, then Y. Wait. Red changes Y. Then green is what changes the blue channel, so green changes the blue channel. And then we multiply uh, so this looks correct. Ah, I've inverted where where I make these because here I'm inverting the green world coordinate, so this is the green coordinate. Here I'm, in, I'm changing what's the blue coordinate. So this is the blue coordinate, let's see. And finally, this is red. Let's see if this is correct. If not, I'm still forgetting something, but no, that's it. So yeah, making normals work with trip planner mapping is a bit confusing. So now that I messed up once, I'm probably not gonna mess it up again because I was just reminded of this detail. And I'm just trying to remove some wires here because this is really confusing. So let's do it for the Y projection using the same logic we used here and connecting the coordinates correctly this time. So here I'm going to already make, a, make this available for, for joining the coordinates that I'm going to modify. Let's see how the colors from Y are being projected on the mesh. So this is the projection of Y. And so red from the normal is changing X in the world. So red is changing the also the red direction of the world. So we just add red with red. This one's going to be less confusing, at least for now. Red with red. So this is the red coordinate we just made. Now, let's see what G is doing. G is also modifying the blue coordinate here from the world. It's hard to see. Okay, so you can see now. So blue up, G is going up. So G is modifying. G from the normal map, from the texture, is modifying the blue coordinate in the world. So, and this is not towards the screen. This is one of the side and up axis. So you don't multiply, just add. So add green to the blue coordinate of the world and because it's the blue coordinate of the world he goes into the blue co blue coordinate in the final changed normal and lastly but not least we have the blue channel which is the one that means how much towards the screen i am towards the screen here is the y-axis and the one towards the screen or the one from the projection you can think it you can think that way you multiply, so Y is the one towards the screen, multiplied by the blue channel. 
texture. So the blue channel of the texture is always going to be multiplied by some coordinate. And it's going to be the coordinate that's from the projection. So here it's the X projection. So blue was multiplied by the red. Here it's the Y projection. So blue was multiplied by green. And Z, blue, is the, it's blue is going to be multiplied by the blue. All right, so this is the Y coordinate screen. And if we plug here, we can see that these are the resulting normals on this side, resulting normals on this side. And you can also see if I display the original coordinates, that it's the same directions, but with the sphere detail added to them. See, it's still most, mostly blue, this is still mostly magenta, this is still mostly red, and this is still black. This means we're on the right track. And let's do the last one to see if we really understood how it works. So red, let's first check how it's being applied on the material, so that's really important. Let's preview this. All right, so it's being applied on Z. And let's see, green is being applied in the direction of X. And Y is, is, the, the, is the red channel from the normal. And of course, blue is now the, the one we're projecting from, which is Z. Now, remember when I said before that the order where, that you use to create the Z coordinates is important? This is why, let me show you. It's, it's, it's like, you can work with the inverted version of this, but then you have to compensate for the inversion. Um, no, actually you don't. I remember doing it one way with once that, that I had to multiply these coordinates by minus one because they were inverse. But I think it was because I was inverting the coordinates here because my text had text and I needed to project it with the coordinates inverted in order to have the text displayed on the right direction. So in this case, fortunately, it's like, it doesn't matter which order you choose uh, because you're not going to have to flip any of the axes. If like, if the way you make your coordinates, red is pointing in the opposite direction of X here, you would have to multiply your channel by minus one to invert its direction too. But in this case, I have X in the direction of X, I mean, red in the direction of X, and green in the same direction as Y. It's, it's brighter on the same direction. So I can just use those without multiplying by minus one. So let's see, so red is in the direction of X. So I add this channel, X coordinate of the normal. Then green, I add it to the green coordinate of the normal because green is in direction of Y, Y is green, so green here. And the direction towards the screen, I multiply. So blue multiplied by blue here. Then I use these to make my coordinates. So just to make sure this is the world red coordinate, so X. This is the world green coordinate, so Y. And we're left with C. Then I can add it here. So let's see. With the details, we have purple on the top right, then blue here, cyan here, and white here. Without the details, this should be the same. Yeah, it's the same. Purple here, blue here, cyan here, white here. Means we didn't mess up. We just added detail to the normals that were already there. And then, same as normal trip planner materials, multiply by the intensities of each phase, of each direction, add the values together. But we need correct values for, for normals. So we need to normalize these values. What is a vector? You can search it on Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a very good explanation of this. But normalizing just makes sure that a vector has a size of 1. The size of the vector is given by its values, the distance of its values from 1 is point 0.0. Um, you can search it, but for now, just understand that we need to normalize values to use them and normals. And these names are not similar by coincidence. 
Because normals are directions, and these directions are vectors of size 1. Normalize this then. All right, so we normalize them. And let's connect it to normal. Uh, let's turn off the preview here. And let's see. Oh, no, this still doesn't look correct. And at the bottom, it's even more messed up. Everything is darker than it should. I know, right? That's because something is still missing. So the problem here is, by default, materials in real, they expect the normals to be in tangent space. Normals in tangent space are like this texture here. They're mostly blue with a bit of green and red in some places. But our normals, if we preview them, they're nothing like that. They're mostly red on this side because they're pointing at X. They're mostly uh, blue at this top side because they're pointing at blue. We have black here because these are negative values. What's happening here is the normals we created with the details are in world coordinates, not tangent space. Tangent space would be the blue things that are related to the, ch the tangents and the normals in the mesh. These are related to the world. We have two ways to solve this problem. This is the final problem. I swear, after this, you can have your planar normals working fine. So to solve this final problem, we have two ways. The lightest one, the, it requires almost no performance, no extra performance, is you have this option in the materials, tangent space normal, and it's checked by default. So it means this normal input here is expecting a tangent space normal, and this is a world space normal. So we turn this off, and then the material is going to expect a world space normal. So now if I turn this off, all the spheres are... Oh, this is so beautiful. I love it. All the spheres are lit in the correct direction. So the light's coming from the top and from, let's say, right side here. And all the spheres are lit as if the light was coming that way. So this means the spheres are all correctly lit. If you look from the top, same thing. Still works. All the spheres, see, it, none of them look like holes. None of them. And it doesn't matter where you look at them from. It doesn't matter. Everything just simply works. Now, if you have, let's say, you already have a material and you're layering materials on top of each other and your other material, needs tangent space normals. So let's say I would mix this whole thing here with another normal and it's all this other normal is using the UVs in the mesh. So it's tangent space. I need to either convert that to a world space normal or this into tangent space. And that's pretty easy. And real has one node that does both of these things. So transform. Then you have from tangent space to world space, which is what you'd use to, to have a, a standard tangent space normal mapped as a mapped in a way to use with a material expecting world space normals. So just as a proof of concept, let's get a normal here. Pass it into the node. Then we are converting from tangent space, source is tangent space, and destination, world space, and putting it into the mesh. Yeah, it's easier to see if I have these smaller. Right? Okay. So as you can see, it works, but if I use this, now that the, the material is set up to use world space normals, if I use the tangent normals directly, now they don't work because that's not the directions the material is expecting. The material is expecting world normals. Now, if the material is expecting tangent normals, this goes back to working as normal, but now these won't because they are world space normals. So we can convert them if we needed to mix these with like normals like this or something like that. We can convert them into tangent space doing the inverse here. So we use world space as source and destination tangent space. Now these normals can be used 
with a material that expects tangent space normals, but it's still being projected as a three planar texture. So yeah, well, this time I only messed up once when I did the, the, the composition of the components here first, but I managed to explain this in under an hour. Last time I mumbled for an hour and a half, messed up a lot, didn't explain things well. This time I think it was way better. This is worth going to YouTube and I hope to have more questions. I hope to have more people watching this. Um, I want to answer questions because, you know, I, I understand the difficulty of getting good in Unreal. I've been working with Unreal for almost 10 years now, or 10 years, no, almost 10 years. Um, and I learned a lot by myself, thanks to the community, thanks to all the free content and questions and answers online that you can find. Thanks to that, I managed to learn a real by myself. And I, I want to give something back to the community. I want to help you guys understand all this stuff, everything that, that feels like it's complex. Complex things are just things that you just haven't understand all the details yet. And then they're not complex anymore. And then you can go on to more complex things that get these complex things and do more things on top of those. So. I want to be able to do that to you guys, to, to, to get you there. I want to answer questions. And yeah, so I hope to, to see you next time, to see more people here. And that's it. I hope this was useful. And I'll see you some other time. And Enrique, thanks for your presence, man. It's been, it's been of great help, especially with the audio problems in the beginning. <laughs>